Has TikTok found the Zodiac Killer? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Danielle. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Y'all, this story is so wild. Now, before we even start, I want to acknowledge that people come online all the time, especially on TikTok, talking about they solved this case, that case, they're related to this serial killer, that serial killer, they're related to the Zodiac. I mean, people claim wild it on tiktok this is nothing new we know this people lie either for clout to troll whatever so i'm gonna start there but in this situation there are overwhelming similarities coincidences evidence question mark for me at least for me that's just my opinion for me it's overwhelming here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go through all the evidence and then you can decide for yourself has tiktok found the zodiac killer now obviously we won't know until there's an investigation but nonetheless it's quite interesting well, first of all i'm going to quickly tell you about the zodiac killer for those of you who've never heard of him who've been living under a literal rock i'm not going to be doing a deep dive on this i'm just going to be quickly giving you some bullet points because again true crime freaks me out so the zodiac killer operated in northern california in the 1960s and 1970s he murdered five known victims and seriously injured two others obviously he tried to murder them too but luckily they survived in one of his cryptic messages that he would write to taunt police he claimed that he had 37 victims but again there have only been seven total of not only but there have been seven total victims linked to the zodiac killer till this day he is known to be one of the most famous unknown serial killers in american history what makes him so intriguing fascinating you know what i mean like interesting but not in a good way was that he gave police so many opportunities to catch him yet he's never been caught. He would literally write and mail taunting messages to the police and media threatening to go on killing sprees. He claimed that he was collecting all these victims for his afterlife because when he died, he would go to paradise and all of his victims that he killed would be his slaves. So yeah, not a great guy. These letters that he would write included cryptograms and like ciphers, some which have still not been decoded to this day. I have to note that through the years, there have been many people who thought they found the Zodiac Killer. I mean, just recently, I saw someone post a short on YouTube saying that the Zodiac Killer was someone named Gary Francis Post. The Zodiac Killer's identity has finally been revealed. After decades of mystery, the real name of the infamous serial killer who called himself the Zodiac has been uncovered by the Case Breakers, a team of more than 40 ex-law enforcement officers, military intelligence experts, and journalists. Based on new forensic evidence, they've announced that the real name of the Zodiac is Gary Francis Post. They linked Post to the killings through new evidence, including some from his own darkroom, as well as by matching scars on his forehead to police sketches, and by linking his actual name to the famous coded letters that the killer sent to newspapers following the grisly string of murders in the 1960s. Gary F. Post passed away in 2018, and he has yet to be confirmed as the Zodiac by law enforcement agencies overseeing the case. But we'll keep you updated as this story develops. And it's funny because the first comment literally says, we found the Zodiac killer about 10 times now. So that just goes to show that people claim to know who the Zodiac killer is all the time. I do want to be fair and balanced here, fair and balanced, because I believe this guy, but I just want to present both sides and let y'all know that there's a lot of crazies out there, so we don't know yet. But like I said before, rarely do people claiming these types of things have this much evidence. So I'm just going to shut up now and we're going to get into it. We're going to watch the videos posted by the Zodiac's grandson, question mark. And by the end of this, I will decide what I think, and you guys can sound off in the comments and let me know what y'all think. My grandpa is the motherfucking Zodiac killer, and this is not clickbait, so please. Sorry, I just have to pause already. I love the way this guy speaks. He's just like, it's like he's just spitting straight facts. I love the way he story tells. I love the way he spits out his screen. I'm convinced. I'm fully convinced. Sorry, sorry. We'll continue. Please, I need the power of the internet to share this book market and blow my comment section up. I want to start off by saying this is not just based off physical appearance. I typed in my grandpa's name on Google the other day, and to my fucking surprise, internet sleuths have been throwing my grandpa's name around for years, connecting him as the Zodiac motherfucking killer. As you can see here in all these pictures on the screen somewhere, that it looks exactly like my grandpa. Let's talk about it. My grandpa was a Vallejo police officer. Yes, the same area where the Zodiac killer's fucking killings took place. Wait, wait, wait. Not just the same area, and I'm sure he'll get into this in later videos he wasn't just patrolling 
the area. He was on patrol in the exact area that those two people were murdered. So Richard Hoffman was in charge of like some juvenile division, basically to make sure that kids weren't out doing the nasty and doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing. And from what I know, because this place was known to be like a lover's lane of sorts and kids would go there to like hook up, he was in charge of the juvenile division that was supposed to watch that area, making sure that kids weren't having sex in the cars, pretty much. And the thing is, is that Richard Hoffman patrolled that area 10 minutes before the murders happened and reported that it was clear, there was no cars there. Then the murder happened and guess who was on scene five minutes later? Yep, you guessed it, Richard Hoffman. Uh. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I'll shut up, I'll shut up, I'll let him talk, sorry. Place, let's move forward, let's talk about the Darlene Sharon murder. Let me tell you, this is not in any order, but the more evidence I give you, you are gonna be convinced that my grandpa is in fact the Zodiac Killer. Darlene Farron and her boyfriend, Mike or Matt, forgot the fucking guy's name, were driving around Vallejo one night, the night that my grandfather happened to be on duty, driving an unmarked police car and wearing plain clothes. Um, Mike, who ended up surviving the shooting, said that they were being followed around by this car all night in Vallejo before they pulled in the Blue Rock Springs. They said when they parked, the car pulled in, a man hopped out of the car and Darlene, the girl who passed away said, oh my God, that's Richard. He's gonna kill us both. Apparently she was dating a police officer in Vallejo behind her husband's back. She was apparently a thotty. Um, rest in peace, Darlene Farron. So this guy in her passenger seat is one of her many boyfriends. And it was well known by her friend group that she was dating a Vallejo cop, although she never told them the name. She had a painting party at her house a few weeks before her murder. And it was said that my grandfather, Richard Hoffman, showed up on invited and she told her circle of friends that she is scared to death of him and and he was not invited there my grandpa denies these claims he says he never laid eyes on her but then later goes on to say i know that she worked at a restaurant locally here in vallejo how the fuck have you never laid eyes on her grandpa you tell me about that um let's move forward um, as Mike said, when, right before they got shot, she said, that's Richard. He's going to kill us both. My grandpa's name is fucking Richard Hoffman. Now let's talk about something else that I thought was really weird. In a letter that the Zodiac wrote and my grandpa's police reports and also this poem that I'm going to talk about later. My grandpa spells the word until wrong. He spells it wrong. He puts two L's at the end. Where in multiple letters of the Zodiac wrote, he also spell, spells until with two L's at the motherfucking end. Girl, that's what sold me. That's what sold me right there. Well, let's talk about the Sherry Bates murder that took place a couple years before the Darlene Farron murder. She was in a library doing her homework. She had just moved from Nebraska. Nebraska, why do I mention that? Because my grandpa was lived in Nebraska. My mother, biological mother, was born Motherfucking Nebraska. In the Nebraska. Oh! Ooh, I'm getting so heated. Ooh, I'm getting so excited. I'm getting so pumped. Let's go! My grandpa was also in the Navy. Dar our, uh, Sherry Bates' brother was also in the Navy. This is weird, right? It all It's all coming together. Well, this murder took place. She was at the library study, and one night she leaves and gets shot up, where they found a poem handwritten underneath a motherfucking desk. And and forensic analysis and, and, and handwriting analysis say that it's the exact writings of the Zodiac, and they say that this is possibly the first killing that the Zodiac ever did. Well, this letter was initialed RH at the very bottom. R.H. Richard Hoffman. Forensic analysis experts said that that letter was written by the Zodiac. So why is no one connecting this to my motherfucking grandpa? Somebody tell me why. It is said that my grandpa and Darlene, the one who got shot at Blue Rock Springs, had a romantic sexual relationship behind everybody's back, behind my grandma's back. Let's talk about his character. My grandpa's character, he was known in my family to be abusive, controlling, manipulating, and also unfaithful to my grandmother. Now we're going to sit here and pretend that my grandpa didn't do this shit. They also say that the crime scene was tampered with. Why did Darlene's family get a call that she was shot before the cops even knew about it? And that call was placed by a payphone outside of Vallejo Police Department. Someone tell me that. And my grandpa was first on scene to that shooting. And, and, and later it was revealed that that scene was tampered with. My grandpa showed up on scene within five minutes of the shooting being reported. He sent away the officers that responded with him. Who sends away responding officers on a possible double murder? And, and the crime scene was tampered with. It was later revealed. So you're still going to tell me my grandpa is not the Zodiac killer. What are we going to do about it? I don't fucking know. My grandpa's on vacation in a grave somewhere. Um, but I'm convinced. Girl, I'm convinced too. You got me. All right, all right, all right. Calm down, calm down. I think there's more parts, but we don't need to watch all of these. Do we? 
we question mark let's see this one my grandpa was a zodiac killer yesterday i posted a video that's now at like three million views um, talking about how my grandpa richard hoffman was a zodiac killer um, there's a lot of questions in the comments section i'm gonna try to address those i'm also gonna show you guys a few clips from a documentary um, that includes my grandpa uh, interviewing acting weird um to my knowledge it's acting i've seen this one we need to watch this one and weird for him during the ride to the hospital and of course her shirt or sweater whatever she was wearing was off and each time that ambulance attendant blew air into her chest there was a little piece of material from her bra that i could see fluttered with every breath he blew in, into that girl this piece of material would flood. And then a witness statement from the guy, Mike, who was with Darlene Farron the night of the shooting in Blue Rock Springs. A friend of hers not to worry about it. He was just jealous. That's all she said about it. He was just jealous. She never mentioned his name, but she said, oh, Richard. I guess our, our name was Richard. I her name Richard. And I think that was his name. She referred to him as Richard. The Zodiac killer guy. Did you say he's really a mean temper and that if he ever found out, he would... So first, I'm not excited, I'm not happy, I'm not thrilled, I'm not proud. A lot of people in the comments are thinking that I'm proud. I am shocked, my jaw's on the floor, and I'm simply sharing information with you guys on the internet. That is it. Not proud. I'm indifferent. I don't feel any type of motherfucking way. Me and my grandpa did not have a relationship um, after the age of nine. I spent damn near every Christmas there at his house up until I was nine when my father got custody of me. Um, he would abuse my mother. He would abuse my grandmother and his children, my uncles as well. Um, and I learned that later growing up in life. He hated my mother. He did not like my mother. Um, and in turn, she eventually turned into an abuser herself. Moving forward, uh, what else was there to answer? No DNA shit, I don't know. Um, in terms of writing, I don't have any handwritten anything. I don't know if anyone searched the house for his belongings. Like I said, I am not close with my mother's side of the family after the age of nine. I'm now 35 years old. I don't think he seems like he's bragging or happy about it. Are people saying that he's bragging? It's kind of weird kind of a weird thing to brag about i don't think he seems like he's bragging i mean that's the same reaction i would have for sure my grandpa was a zodiac killer part three if you have not seen parts one and two please please go watch it i want to start this one off by saying once again clarifying this is not me glorifying my grandpa being a serial killer this is not me excited and happy and pumped up that's so weird that people are saying that i don't get that vibe at all or as you guys would say in the comment section flexing i'm not flexing anything i'm simply sharing information i would assume that any human out there who discovered that their family member is possibly a serial killer is going to show some type of emotion i don't know if you guys expect me to be crying or what anyway today we're going to talk about a few things that also i connect as my grandpa be sorry i shouldn't be laughing but he's funny i'm sorry and a motherfucker zodiac killer number one is in his police report describing the darlene farron um crime scene he writes it out and this is all in quotes as you can see here on the screen pause to read he writes it as if he's writing a poem and we know that the zodiac also wrote the fluidity of a poem another thing we're going to tap on is um the common misspellings in my grandpa's police reports and also common misspellings in the uh, zodiac writings although the only word that they spelled wrong was the word until with two l's here's a list of both of the ways they spelled words and a big one is like the double t's or using e's with the ing word instead of dropping the e my grandpa frequently did that something else about my grandpa um he was really horrible at spelling he hated like crossword puzzles but he really enjoyed math and he also was a woodworker that's what he would like spend a lot of time doing going out getting supplies and spending time in a garage um doing woodwork could this be a, a sign of like the coding and, and the cryptic messages of the zodiac because the zodiac was also bad at spelling and also, my grandpa, as stated, was uh, on the juvenile division wearing plain clothes and an unmarked car the night of the Darlene Farron shooting. And his area of operation was to patrol Blue Rock Springs and Lake Herman Road, Lover's Ridge, for teenagers doing the dirty birdie up in those little areas late at night. Well, he reported on the radio about 10 minutes before Darlene Farron's shooting that the area was clear and there were no vehicles. He also arrived on scene of the shooting five minutes after they found out about it. 
and said that there was no cars. So he patrolled the area 10 minutes before the shooting, arrived five minutes after the shooting, and still reported not seeing any cars on the scene. If he already patrolled that area, wouldn't he have seen Darlene Farron and Mike parked in that parking lot? I don't know. A little suspicious. Yeah, that's the part I was talking about. One more. One more. Let's watch one more. I'm hooked now. I'm hooked. My grandpa was the Zodiac Killer Part 4. First and foremost, I wanted to come on here and apologize. In my first video I made a couple days ago, I used a really insensitive and volatile statement in describing uh, one of the victims. Um, there is no excuse for it, and I wanted to apologize to any of the victims and uh, victims' families out there. I apologize. Moving forward with today's video, I suggest you guys get your motherfucking popcorn because I'm about to rock your socks off. If you haven't seen part one, two, and three, I have a playlist up top. Go watch all of them. This shit gets crazy. So if you don't know, my grandpa Richard Hoffman was a Vallejo police officer, and I believe he was the Zodiac Killer. So I found this uh, poem written by the Zodiac, and in this poem, it uses the phrase Tit Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. Well, Tit Willow happens to be a song written by Mikado. And in that song lyrics, there happens to be a mention of Dicky Bird right here. Also in this poem by Mikado, the Tit Willow, that's the title of it. I have no commentary. Sorry, I just realized I have none. My jaw's on the floor and my eyes are like this. So I got nothing to say. Let's keep watching. It states when describing a man who's passing away that he gargled out blood. If you watch this clip here from my grandfather giving a description of the scene, he uses the same type of statement. He was moaning and gargled out blood. I looked down there, and there was a young guy down there laying on his back. Obviously, had been shot. He was reaching up towards me or the flashlight I was holding, kind of gurgling, obviously in pain. I find that ironic I may be reaching. You guys can draw the conclusion. Tit Willow is a song by Mikado where the word Dicky Bird is used. My grandpa's name is Richard, a.k.a. Dick. Let's get deeper into this letter. The autograph, the signature at the bottom is obviously decoded and gibberish. Well, when you put these codes together, these little words and symbols, it just happens to spell the word Dick. Richard, is that you, Richie boy? Dick, hello? I don't know if I'm tripping. You guys tell me what you think about the tip. way that this poem or letter is written by the Zodiac and how poetic it is. And also referencing Tip Willow and that's poetic nature. My grandpa's statement right here. Describing the scene at Blue Rock Springs the night of Darlene Farron's murder and Mike McGow got shot. My grandpa uses poetic terminology the way he writes describing the peacocks are singing and it was dark and the wind, the breeze was blowing across my face. My grandpa was a poet? Apparently the way he describes these crime scenes. Damn. Rarely in my life speechless, but I'm speechless. God damn. I don't know about you, but for me, that is compelling evidence to say the least. The things that definitely had me sold were the similarities within the writing. Like I paused it and even though the only misspellings that they had the same were the words until, they had very similar like misspelling styles. I don't know how to phrase it, but like they would misspell words the same way. So crazy, so crazy. Oh my God, I'm tripping out. This guy has so many other videos, like I said. I haven't seen them all, but one of them that I did see was him talking about that he's in talks with Siri network i assume they're gonna make some sort of like documentary or something about this but this is just so crazy i don't know as for me i'm sold i i fully believe richard hoffman he's a zodiac killer can't tell me otherwise maybe that says a lot about me maybe i'm gullible i don't know <laughs> but my whole thing that i hope comes out of this well yes this is exciting and very entertaining to follow and it's thrilling to explore new leads and theories my biggest hope is that the case will be reopened and ultimately solved the families affected in these tragic events deserve closure something tangible after all these years if that's even possible i mean i think he says in one of his videos that his main goal is to get the case reopened and finally solved to bring closure to the families so i hope that's true and i hope that happens it's so heartbreaking to think how much time has passed and the families that were directly affected might no longer be with us so it's really sad to think that they passed without getting any closure 
but at least for those that remain, the chance to find answers and some measure of closure, I'm sure will be invaluable. Sometimes as cases grow older and become more public, it's easy to lose sight of the human suffering at their core. We become so absorbed by the details and theories that we forget that these were real people that endured real pain. I really hope with renewed attention and determination, we can finally bring some peace to the families who have been waiting for answers for so long. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. I know I did not have a whole lot of commentary, but I was shook, you guys. I was speechless. Please, please, please let me know what you guys are thinking i am so curious am i just like so gullible that i believe anything or is this valid do you guys believe this too because i'm sold like fully sold let's go get the zodiac killer i know he's dead but i'm fully on board let's solve this case and by let's i mean you guys i just want to watch on tiktok do you guys think grandpa's a zodiac killer or do you guys think he's lying what's going on here don't forget to drop me a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update all right guys have a wonderful day don't be an asshole and please don't kill people okay bye